Viewer discretion is advised. Boom, perfect timing. You might think that the police need a warrant to search you or your property, but that's not always the case. During a traffic stop, all the police need is probable cause to legally search your vehicle. Now, probable cause means that the police must have some facts or evidence to believe that you're involved in criminal activity. It's not just a hunch. The officer must observe something real. We're talking about the sight or smell of contraband in plain view or plain smell, or an admission of guilt for a specific crime. But here's the thing, minor traffic violations like speeding, a broken taillight, or expired registration are not enough probable cause to search your vehicle. That's right, just because you were going a little too fast or forgot to renew your registration, that does not give the police the right to search your car. So if you're ever pulled over by the police, remember your rights, don't let them take advantage of you. Stay informed. Stay safe. It was a hot summer night in Baytown, Texas. Kedrick Crawford was driving through town minding his own business when he pulled into a parking lot to put an address into his GPS. But before he knew it, he was surrounded by police officers. The officers were investigating what they called suspicious behavior from Mr. Crawford as he was backing in and out of a parking space. They asked him if he had been drinking, if he had any weapons in the car. Mr. Crawford answered truthfully, but it was not enough to satisfy the officers. The officers searched his car but found nothing. However, something about Mr. Crawford's demeanor made them suspicious. They wrote in their police report that Mr. Crawford became increasingly nervous during the search. Mr. Crawford would begin to question the officers, asking what the problem was. That's when things would take a turn for the worse. The officers would pin Mr. Crawford to the ground, handcuff him, and tase him as he begged the officers to not kill him. Alright. Right. How you doing? Good, man. You ain't got no weapons or nothing? Oh, no. Alright, you might as well come over and talk to me real quick. You got out kind of quick. Now, man, so... I was making contact because you were here for a while, and then you backed out, and you went back over here, you backed in, and I just make sure you're not drunk or something. No, I, I, I don't know, I'm looking for something in my car. All right, man. All right. Hey, I'm going to make sure you ain't got no weapons. Can I pat you down real quick? All right, man. I just want to check you out, make sure everything's okay, man. I saw you back, you were about to turn out on the road, and then you backed up. What's up with that? My Where you trying to go, man? Because you got out of the car pretty quick. There's no guns in the car today? All right, dude, I was making sure it wasn't a freaking AK back there or anything. Sawed off, nothing like that, right? Okay, good. No switch plays, nothing like that. Okay. You ain't got kilos, or bricks, birds back there, and nothing like that. Bird, boy, if it was a bird, it'd be flying in the air, right? Okay, okay. Birds? Okay. Birds fly in the air, right? Some, yeah. Okay, so. But nothing bad in the car today, man? Nothing bad in the car. All right, need narcotics in the car today? A little bit of weed? No paraphernalia? No paraphernalia. Nothing like that, okay. Have you been arrested in Baytown before, man? No, I haven't. No? All right, have you been arrested before or anything? No, sir. All right. Did your driver license through Texas? Yes, sir. All right. I'm just waiting on you, man. I'm just waiting on this return real quick, okay. So while I'm waiting on the return, is it cool if I make sure nothing bad in the car today? I mean, you want to search the car, you can search it. Okay. Yeah, no, you're but right. I, mean, I don't have a problem. So okay, yes, yeah, no big deal, man. Hey, uh, you mind if I check your pockets to make sure you ain't got nothing? I can? Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure, man. I got a little uh, mace can. Okay, I'm going to grab that so I don't <laughs> get... Uh, not saying you will, I just know. Sir, I, I... You told me to search my car. I mean, what's going on? I don't understand. 
What do you mean? I, we, I search it. Yeah, you go ahead and search. That's what's going on right now. What do, you, what do you not understand, sir? Hey, I'm gonna put your pepper spray back here. Yeah. Ain't nothing to it, man. No need, no need to be tripping or nothing. Okay, so what's the issue? I don't understand. Honestly, uh, you're nervous. I'm sure I'm, I'm seeing some nervous, nervous behavior. I'm, you, why wouldn't I be? I mean, I'm not nervous, okay. but I'm saying, but I'm saying, what's going on? Yeah, I'm just checking it, checking you out, man. You gave, you gave us consent I don't to have search. Any warrants, right? No, nope, but hey, you said all oh, this is consensual. You're staying here. You gave us consent to search. Well, yeah, we're going to search it, you know? I mean, and we haven't found nothing in there. I got insurance and everything. What's okay, going on? and what does that have to do with anything? So when am I free to go? Whenever, man. Whenever? Yeah. All right, put your hand in my back. What happened? Don't tense up, dude. What did I oh, do? Oh, freaking drop you. What did I do? What is, what's going on? I don't have anything. What's going on? I'm taking the ground. So, how'd you do anything? Put it what? behind your back. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know what's going on, sir. You got his hand? Yep. What's going on? 129 or 8. What's going on? 129, we're biting. Put your hand behind your back. I'm going to tase you. No, I'm done doing it. Put your hand on your back. I'm not doing it. 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 I'm not Watch out! Come on, get me get Watch out! Watch out! Taser, 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 taser! Come on, get me 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 get Kedrick Crawford was charged with assault on a public servant, which is a felony. These officers would shamelessly claim that Mr. Crawford had scratched one of the officers during the scuffle. Look at him, he's like he's dead. It's been almost a month since Kendrick Crawford found himself in the hospital bed. His face is still healing. Stitches on his eyebrow have been removed, but his recovery continues. I have no uh, feeling in this part of my hand here. The right side of the left hand, there's no, no feeling in that at all. I have a rib that's bothered me quite a bit, short of breath quite a few times. So, uh, yes, different, quite a few different things going on. Crawford's injuries stem from an arrest on July 6th in Baytown, just outside of Houston. I was nowhere near expecting this type of an event at the end of the day. Crawford says those pills found in his trunk were antibiotics. Police sent the pills to a lab for testing, but have not yet released those results. Crawford and his family also believe police have released all of the body cam video related to his arrest. We want the footage. We will not let this go, not this time. Our ancestors are crying over this one. In January of 2020, the charges against Mr. Crawford were dropped. Interim Chief of Police Mike Holden placed patrol officers Teddy Sims and Samuel Surrett on administrative leave without pay, but would place detention officer Shane Dunlap on administrative leave with pay. A first appearance for both of those officers as well a third man they're all accused of brutally beating Kedrick Crawford right here in this parking lot two years ago today
Crawford was charged with aggravated assault on a peace officer, but now those officers face charges for assaulting Crawford. Officers Teddy Sims and Samuel Surratt today appeared in court on a charge of felony aggravated assault. Also charged with aggravated assault is this man, Shane Dunlap, described as a civilian public servant in the indictment. Attorney Greg Cagle represents the two police officers. We just got started. I mean, the case got indicted on Thursday. They turned himself in on Friday. A serious crime had been committed. Attorney so, U.A. Uh, Lewis you know, represents we Crawford and to... says her team pushed to get this case investigated. We reached out to so many agencies trying to get some attention to this crime. I couldn't breathe at all. Video from the other officer's camera better confirms that. Video Baytown police did not release. You can see how Mr. Crawford was actually passed from all three of these defendants around and placed in a in chokeholds and punched. Attorney Lewis underscoring the point that her client, she says, didn't have a criminal record prior to all of this. Meantime, the next court appearance for the officers, as well as Mr. Dunlop, is in October. We're live in Baytown. I'm Brandon Walker, KPRC 2 News. In July of 2021, a Harris County grand jury would indict the two Baytown police officers and the detention officer for their involvement in the July 2019 assault of Kedrick Crawford. Teddy Sims, Samuel Surratt, and Shane Dunlap were all indicted for first-degree felony aggravated assault. Officer Sims had his bond set at $75,000, while Officer Surratt and Detention Officer Dunlap both had their bonds set at $60,000 each. In addition to those bond amounts, bond conditions include having no contact with Mr. Crawford, no contact with each other, wearing a GPS ankle monitor, no drugs or alcohol, and no possession of firearms. In June of 2020, Kedrick Crawford would file a lawsuit against Officer Teddy Sims, Officer Samuel Surratt, Detention Officer Shane Dunlap, the City of Baytown, and other officials for a total of eight violations claiming false imprisonment and conspiracy of silence and false evidence. However, in November of 2021, and this is all according to the lawsuit, the court would dismiss Mr. Crawford's lawsuit with prejudice, which means he would be barred from filing the same lawsuit against these officers again in the future. The reason? Well, according to United States District Judge Lynn Hughes, Mr. Crawford and or his legal team failed to properly serve most of the defendants within the court's deadline. The court would extend the deadline for Mr. Crawford, but he still failed to serve many of the defendants on time, ranging from 3 to 42 days later. The court did not believe Mr. Crawford had a good reason for missing the deadline. The judge then explains that Mr. Crawford did not provide enough facts to support his legal claims against the defendants. His complaints consisted mainly of legal conclusions without sufficient details. His claims against specific defendants like Sundar, Gonzalez, and Harris County were dismissed for this reason. Ultimately, the court believed Mr. Crawford had shown a pattern of neglect in this case, which is why they decided to dismiss the case with prejudice, barring him from filing the lawsuit again. <laughs> 